Hey everyone, welcome to my second look back at the technology of 2017. I've already talked about PC graphics hardware and my feeling of disappointment at the lack of new products and what we did get kind of falling short of expectations. Now it's time to move on to CPUs where the situation is a whole lot rosier. New product lines, more competition, tumbling prices. 2017 has been pretty awesome here. So very much with an emphasis on gaming in mind, let's take a look at some of my high points for the year. We'll kick off with my pick for the best CPU of the year, and that simply must go to the Core i7-8700K, though pretty much all of the Coffee Lake i5s and i7s are pretty tasty. I mean, the benchmarks speak for themselves here. Ashes of the Singularity's CPU test is essentially a synthetic bench in a game engine, and the lead of the 6-core 12-thread 8700K is simply tremendous here, with a 23% lead rising to 28% in the super heavily threaded Crisis 3. I mean, bearing in mind that even with an overclocked Titan X Pascal, I still expect some areas of our benchmarks to be GPU limited. The gains here gen on gen are extraordinary. The 6-core i5 essentially matches the outgoing 7700K, while the i5-8400 is essentially a mini i7. I reckon you could get around 90% of the performance of the 7700K there, which is pretty spectacular. But it's the 8700K that set the pace here. To my mind, it's the fastest gaming CPU money can buy right now. And so from my perspective, that is my CPU of the year. But whether it's the best price versus performance offering, well, that's another question. While Intel takes point here, my runner-up for CPU of the year has got to go to AMD. It took a while for me to source a Ryzen 1600 review sample, but, well, it's actually pretty awesome when I actually got to grips with it. It's the first CPU to come along in years that takes a look at Intel's quad-core i5 and says, yeah, that's just not good enough. Six cores, 12 threads versus four powerful single threads on the Intel side. Now, it's surprising that the i5 actually holds up as well as it does in the era of multi-threaded gaming. But I've got to hand it to AMD here. The 1600 is an excellent product and it kind of leads me to my favorite benchmark run of the year. Now, benchmarking a CPU isn't easy. To be honest, a lot of canned benchmarks out there are entirely GPU bound, making them borderline pointless for measuring CPU performance. But this Crisis 3 cutscene is enlightening. You can see Intel's single thread power take point throughout the bench with the 7600K. But in the heaviest workloads, the i5 tanks while Ryzen holds its performance better and has a ton less stutter. This is a classic example of the advantages of seeing performance in context. Benchmarks are still defined by average frame rate metrics. Now, Ryzen still wins pretty handily in Crisis 3 here, but my question is this. To what extent is that Intel result being skewed upwards by results like this? Empty frames, if you like. I'm not saying that we hold the answer to the future of measuring CPU performance in gaming, but I think there's a strong argument that we need a new way of assessing performance based on results like this. Of course, the quad-core i5 is now a thing of the past. Coffee Lake pushes this product line into six-core territory, and the quads are now the preserve of the i3. And given a straight choice between the i5-8400 and the Ryzen 5 1600, yeah, I'd go Intel. In fact, considering the price versus performance ratio of the 8400, maybe that should be my CPU of the year. But it's all about the value, right? A six core 12 thread Ryzen runs on far cheaper motherboards than the 8400. And with the 1600, you get a supplied heatsink that lets you overclock to 3.8 gigahertz. It's just an awesome package overall. And as much as I want to recommend the i5 8400, well, the concept of only being able to use it on an expensive Z370 board is nuts, bearing in mind it's a locked processor. Now we can fully assume those cheaper boards will come next year of course. What I will say is this though, previously I've advocated fast RAM to get the most out of processor performance and a Z370 board does let me test faster DDR4 with the 8400. Thing is, there's not that much improvement over the 8400 supported 2666 megahertz modules. I mean, if a cheapo board comes along, 
that runs the 8400 exactly as it does on a Z board, this CPU could be the only processor you'll need for years to come. But if you do want value, then wow, 2017 offered up the Pentium G4560 and it is excellent. Yes, you can run it on a cheap board and yes, at $65, it's a steal. Think of it as a strategically shaved last gen i3 and you're on the right track here. The Pentiums of days gone were dual core chips with no hyper threading. They were okay as far as they went, but the KB Lake refresh here added back in those extra threads. The result is the best price versus performance CPU on the market. And with its compatibility with faster DDR4, the end result is that the Pentium G4560 is uncannily similar to a Core i3-6100 in our gaming benchmarks. Remarkable stuff really, but just a word of caution. Now I see a lot of budget bills out there pairing the Pentium with an AMD GPU. And that says to me that these guys are not actually testing the builds they're recommending. Crucially, AMD's DX11 driver overhead is much higher than Nvidia's, leaving less CPU time to run game logic. And you can see that here in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. The RX 480 is faster than the GTX 1060 in this game, but in any dense scene, the AMD card drops like a stone while Nvidia holds its own. So yeah, we're talking about a cheap CPU here, but potentially you may need a more expensive GPU to get the best out of it. Okay, so those are my key CPU picks for the year. Core i7 8700K, simply stupendous. And there is talk of an eight core successor next year, which may prove even more potent in gaming. Meanwhile, Ryzen 5, specifically the 1600 model, also caught my eye. It took the fight to Intel's Heartlands and won. And maybe it was part of the decision to shift i5 to a six core setup with Coffee Lake. Meanwhile, at the lower end, man, that G4560 is something special. But for me, what's really been special has been the changes brought to the market by competition. Now, it takes years to design a CPU, so Intel's latitude to responding to AMD has been limited and has perhaps been overstated, but it certainly had an impact at the high end. Ryzen 7 disrupted Intel's 8-core strategy and Threadripper has forced Intel to be much more realistic with the pricing of its higher-end enthusiast parts. And yeah, there's more to come with AMD and I reckon that will result in an Intel response that should be fascinating. Can't wait to see what that actually is. But that's all from me for now. Please do like and subscribe and I'll be seeing you all next year. But for now, thanks for watching.